In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Um, we thank God for another opportunity to come before his presence. And as you can see from your screen, we're speaking on the topic of putting the trees not planted by God. Of putting the trees that are not planted by God. We'll take a we'll look at Matthew chapter 15. Matthew in chapter 15. And I will read to you there in verses 12 and 13. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest not thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. There we see Jesus talking to his disciples. And at times when we read that verse, when we read that passage, you know, it many of us start to think of those plants, those trees, as something maybe very big, very mighty, a giant thing. Maybe like somebody who is possessed by demons or something so drastic in somebody's life. That is the idea many people have about every plant, every tree not planted by God. But it could be something small. It could be that you are prayerful before, but now because of things, issues, circumstances, you are prayerless. God did not plan that in your life. It could be that you are victorious before, living a victorious life. You are vibrant in the Lord before, but now things have gone so cold. Things have gone so down. God has not planted that plant, that tree in your life. Does it have to be something big? That is why I want you to really consider this message today so that you can be revived, so that you can be restored, so that God can do his work in your life. You know, it could be just something as small as you are getting more angry than before. You are getting more reactive. The little thing you are reacting now. God did not plant that in your life because the Bible says, let every man be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to rust, slow to anger. And if you're not quick to anger, that is a tree that God has not planted. So look in what tonight. It may not be something big. And of course, it may be something big as well. But God wants to uproot all the trees, all the plant that he has not planted in our lives today. There are many things in our life journey that we come across. We look at these things in our life and they look detrimental. They look damaging. They look harmful. They look injurious. They can be painful. Situation and circumstances, you know, that we didn't really want, that we are not happy about. Some of these may actually be instances of trees, of plants not planted by God. And we have to identify it. We have to address it. We have to deal with it tonight. Look at Numbers chapter 33. Numbers 33. And I will read to you there in verse 55. Numbers 33, and I will read for you in verse 55. It says, But if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sight, and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. And that's the situation some of us find ourselves today. Because we are not totally cooperative with God. Because we are not totally doing what he wants us to be. Because we have allowed the, those, those trees that he has not planted to take root in our lives. Because we have not totally driven away the enemy like we ought to do. You know, those trees have become bricks in our eyes. They have become thorns in our side. They are vexing us. We are not living a full life. We're not living to the capacity that God wants us to live. We're not living to the expectation of God for our life. You see it in your life. You see it in your ministry. You see it in your health. You see it in your career. There is something that is not just right. Something that is not just perfect. Something that is not just where you should be. You know, vexing you. In this land, you left Nigeria. You left wherever you may be, from Africa, from anywhere, anywhere you be from the world. And you came here. And you still feel those things. You still feel those effects. Vexing you in the land wherein you dwell. 
peace may be trees, plants, which are not planted by the Lord. That is why we are looking at this topic today. Those plants, those things vexing us, those pricks in our eye, those thorns in our side, we need to deal with them. We need to remove them as we cooperate with God tonight. Like I said, maybe little things in court, may not be something so big. It may even be something you are getting comfortable with, but deep down, God is telling you, this is not how we're supposed to be. This is not how your ministry should be. This is not how you should be living. This is a tree. This is a plant I have not planted. You that were a prayer warrior before, but now you are struggling to even pray for five minutes. This is a plant I have not planted. This is vexing you in the land wherein you dwell. And that is why we need to uproot all those trees that are not planted by God in our life. As we go on, we start. These trees are dear due to specific reasons. And they produce fruits in our lives that are detrimental and not according to the plan of God for our life. But what is the good news? The good news is that as we come to God today, as you open yourself to God today, as you submit yourself to God today, because these trees were not planted by God, because this is not the perfect plan of God for you, because God's thoughts towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. These trees, they can be destroyed. These trees, they can be uprooted from your life even this evening. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10, and I will read for you in verse 27. Isaiah chapter 10, and I will be reading for you in verse 27. Isaiah 10, 27 says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulders, that tree upon your life, and his yoke from off thy neck, that tree upon your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And as we pray together today, as we join our feet together today, all those trees upon your neck, all those trees upon your shoulder, weighing you down, not making you to live an expansive life, not making you to live a life of fruitfulness, not making you to live a life of fullness. You know, the Bible says the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And that will be your portion. That will be your experience today, tonight, in Jesus' name. We we'll look at three subtopics. The first is causes of unwanted trace in our lives. The second subtopic is manifestation of unwanted trace in our lives. And lastly, we we'll look at destroying unwanted trees in our lives. Let's quickly go to the first subtopic, causes of unwanted trees in our lives. You know, there are many reasons why these trees, unwanted trees, can be found in a Christian's life, in the life of a person. You know, and like I said, some may be big trees. You know, maybe the devil is suppressing you, maybe the devil is subjugating you, or maybe something small in court. You know, but no matter what they may be, there are reasons why they are there in the first place. A man that used to be very prayerful and now is prayerless, there is a reason for it. There's a reason for that tree in your life. A man that could move mountain before, but now cannot even move a small stone. There's a reason why that is happening. That unwanted tree is in your life as at now. Look at Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs 26. And I will read for you in verse 2, the book of Proverbs, chapter 26, and in verse 2. It says, as the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse, costless, shall not come. It's a reason for that curse, in quote, that unwanted tree to be there in your life. It's a reason for that plant that God has not planted, that needs to be uprooted, to be there. The cost costless shall not come. That is why you need to search yourself today. Where have I missed it? Where have I gone wrong? Where have I, you know, allowed the devil to plant that tree in my life? And at times the tree starts as a small thing and then starts to germinate, starts to become bigger, and then it overtakes, and then it overwhelms your life, and then it controls your life. Where, what, where did I miss it? But when you know where you missed it, then you can start to correct it. Some of these reasons, 
causes of unwanted traits in our life may be obvious. May be obvious. Maybe you have sinned. Maybe you've committed fornication. Maybe you've doubled into what you shouldn't double into. Some may take soul searching for you to really allow God to search yourself for you to identify them. Let us let us search and try our way, the Bible says, and turn again to the Lord, you know. And some may take for you to really ask God to open your eyes, spiritual discernment. Open my eyes, oh God, where did I go wrong? What has really happened for you to be able to discover them? First Corinthians chapter 11. Let's look at First Corinthians chapter 11. And I'll be reading to you there. Uh, for you there in verse 28. First Corinthians chapter 11 and in verse 20. But let, let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. As we go through some scriptural passages and some reasons of a wanted tree, I want you to examine yourself. Don't, you know, rationalize. Don't excuse yourself. Allow the Spirit of God to talk to you. Allow the Spirit of God to search you. And for you to discover any cause of unwanted trees in your life. You know, so some of the causes we consider is, number one, is the breaching of the wall of protection by disobedience to God. Maybe you've been disobedient to God. Maybe you have done what God has asked you not to do. You know, God told you, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Maybe you are getting yoked. You are doing what they are doing. You feel this is a new society. I have to join them. I have to be part of it. And because of that, you have been disobedient to God. You know, for disobedience makes us open to the death of the wicked one. It removes us from the secret place of the most. The Bible says, those that dwell it in the secret of the most shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And when you're under that shadow, the trees that he has not planted cannot be there. But because you've removed yourself, in the secret place of God, through disobedience, then you are exposed to the devil planting his unwanted tree in your life. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And we we'll read in verse 8. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 8. If that digget a pit shall fall into it. And also break at an edge, a serpent shall bite him. You've broken the edge of God's protection because of disobedience, because of familiarity with the opposite sex, because of the things you say, because of the things you double into. And because of this disobedience, the serpent has beaten and then he has planted that on water tree in your life. Look at your life. Are you disobedient to God? Have you breached the world of God's protection? Have you broken the edge? The serpent has beaten. The serpent can bite. And that's on one step three can be seen in your life. Another thing, of course, is spiritual slumbering and apathy. You know, an attitude of spiritual carelessness. You are carefree about spiritual things nowadays. Don't take things seriously again. You can allow the devil to plant an unwanted tree in your life. You're not spiritually alert again. You're careless. You're at ease in Zion. You know? The, 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 the case of this world, that secularity in the society has gotten hold of you. This can cause the devil to plant an unwanted tree in your life. Matthew chapter 2, 13. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. We we'll read verses 24 and 25. Matthew 13, 24 and 25. It says, uh, And... Another parable put a force unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like in unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his way. You've sown good seed. You are careful before. You are awake before, but now you are sleeping. And the enemy is busy sowing tears, tears in your life. You know, he sowed it and he just goes away because, you know, once he sowed it, he'll start to germinate. It goes away. When you have spiritual apathy and slumbering, that can be a cause for the devil, a, a, an avenue for the devil to plant on water tree in your life. Another thing is turning from spiritual spirituality to carnality can cause the devil to plant on water plant on water tree in your life. When we are becoming more tuned to the carnal frequency, 
rather than the free, spiritual frequency, then we open ourselves to the working of the enemy. Just like you tune a radio to a frequency. Some of us now we are more tuned to the frequency of the world. Anything passing in the world, we catch it immediately. But any spiritual thing, we don't really catch because our antenna is tuned away from it. We are more concerned with the things of this world nowadays. It catches our attention, the music of the world, the fashion of the world, the speech of the world. We are tuned to it, catches our attention. Because of that, the devil starts to sow unwanted seeds and plant unwanted plants in our life. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel 8. And I want you to allow God to speak to you through the scripture I'm reading now. Ezekiel chapter 8 and in verse 16. Ezekiel 8, verse 16. And he brought me into the inner court of, of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their back towards the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east. And they worshipped the sun towards the east. Those people were still associated with the temple of God. They were at the door of the temple. And what happened? They turned their back toward the temple of God and turned their faces toward the east and worship the sun toward the east. Are you like that? Your spiritual antenna is totally dead. You're still in the church. You are still at the door. You are still a worker. You are still singing. But you've turned your back to the Lord. And your face is turned to the world. Totally engrossed, you know, engrossed by the things of this world. When you are like that, the devil is able to easily start to plant seeds in your life. Because you are not tuned to the Lord, you start to plant unbelief. You start to plant lust. You start to, I mean, you start to plant, you know, you know that, that spirit of covetousness. You start to look for things you shouldn't be looking for. You start to cut corners. You know, you start to rationalize things. You know, I can do this. I can take that. Even though it doesn't belong to me, I will give some to God. And then that's because you've turned your back to the house of the Lord and you have turned your face toward the east. And you worship the sun towards the east. Another thing that could cause the devil to plant unwanted trees in our life is when you hold on to the items of the enemy. Maybe you're coming from Africa, and when you are coming, they gave you something. Ah, as you are going to UK, and you have many enemies. Just all this thing is it's not really, you know, it's not really something bad. It's what your grandfather was using, and they gave you an amulet. Or you went to some prayer places where they gave you some things to hold and put in your bag and put under your pillow, some chains, some beads. Are you still holding on to those items of the enemy? Are you wondering what is happening in your life? And you want to there are these unwanted trees that you know you are seeing their signs in your life. It's because you are holding on those onto those things that they gave you for, for that this thing is for protection, this thing is for good luck. You still keep those things in your, in your, you know, within your body or in your house. You are actually opening the door for the enemy. My, uh, look at Acts chapter 19. And some of you may be wondering, is this thing really possible? You know, but you'll be surprised what people keep in their houses, what people keep hold of, you know, items of the enemy. Maybe you were a drunkard before and you still have those bottles in your house. Or you are smoking marijuana before, and you still have some of those paraphilia in your house, and you look at them at times. You know, those are the items that you need to destroy immediately. Because when you do, when you when you keep hold of them, you are opening the door for the enemy in your life. Um, Acts 19, quickly, I will read for you. Acts chapter 19, verses 18 and 19. And many that came, that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. 19. Many of them also, which used curious as, brought their books together and burned them before all men. Burn them. You still have some of those books, ungodly books, books that are occultic, and you're still keeping them. You've got to burn them. You've got to destroy them. Any items you are holding, you have to destroy them. One more thing before we go to the next point, lack of spiritual exercise. The Bible says those that fear the Lord speak often one to another. 
Do you, are you engaged in spiritual exercises? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Are you engaged in spiritual exercises? Are you reading your Bible? We've talked about quiet time. It may look like a basic thing, but how many of us are doing our quiet time regularly? When you lack those spiritual exercises, your, most, your spiritual muscles start to atrophy. Your spiritual muscles start to decrease. And the devil is able to easily penetrate you and destroy and plant a stray in your life when you have stopped doing your family devotion as a family and then you are wondering why there's so much confusion in there in this family why is there not love like before in this family it's because you are you know now ignoring those spiritual exercises and the devil is starting to plant seed seed of distrust seed seed of argument in the home you know when we do this thing, the devil is able to take advantage. Quickly, let's go to the second subtopic, manifestation of unwanted traits in our lives. You know, when these causes we have considered are in your lives, and then you may start to notice some manifestation. You may start to see that, ah, there are now unwanted traits in my life. Be and because these traits are not planted by God, it produces fruits that are not to his glory. It produces unpalatable fruits. You that used to be so calm, so meek before, now you are proud. Now you are pompous because you bought a car of 2024. You are now pompous because you have bought a mortgage out. I mean, have you bought a house on mortgage? You are now pompous. That spirit of humility has gone from you. You know, you start to notice some of those manifestations in your life. It could be little, little things and it will affect you adversely, spiritually, physically your ministry, in your church, you know, in your physical life, in your mental life, you start to see the manifestation of this unwanted tree in your life. The Bible says you shall know them by their fruit. If only you would take a step back and look at some of the manifestations in your life and look at some of the things happening in your life, you understand, ah, this tree wasn't planted by God. This is not supposed to be there. This was not how I was doing before. Maybe when I slept, somebody has some tasks. It has now become a plant, a tree in my life. Let's consider some of the manifestation of these unwanted trees in our life. Number one is backsliding and separation from God. When you see yourself rising and falling, you're not consistent with God again. You know, you that spend day after day, week after week, year after year, being firm and straight with God. Now you're rising and falling. Now you are hot today and cold tomorrow. Now you don't enjoy a close relationship with God. This is an unwanted tree. You are so close to God before. You had the joy of salvation. But now it's not there again. It's lacking. It's not there again. It's gone. You should be like David and cry to God, Restore unto me, O God, the joy of thy salvation. When it's gone, this is a sign, a manifestation of unwanted tree in our life. That's what happened to Judas. Um, Acts chapter 1, look at Acts chapter 1, and we'll read verse 25. Acts chapter 1, verse 25, talking about Judas, that he may take part of the ministry and apostleship from which Judas, by transgression, fell, that he might go to his own place. They were appointing another apostle in place of Judas, and the talk of Judas, that he, he fell by transgression, he became separated from God by transgression. And that's what unwanted tree does in our life. That unwanted tree was planted in the heart, in the life of Judas. And it led to him being separated from God. That he may go to his own place. Another manifestation of these trees in your life is consistently be defeated by the enemy. And like I said before, some of us we are looking for big trees, mighty trees. Oh, I'm not possessed by the devil, so I don't have this unwanted tree in my life. I don't have anything that God needs to approve, but it may be small, small things. When you are consistently being defeated by the enemy, when instead of you being an overcomer, the devil is consistently overcoming you. You put your hand in this, you are overcome. You fight this battle, you do not get victory. The certain sin is ruling over you, overcoming you. The devil is defeating you through the certain sin. You go to God and say, God, I don't want this anger the way I reacted. I shouldn't have reacted. And then after a few weeks, you react like that again. Oh, that's an unwanted thing in your life. The devil is consistently defeating you. The devil is consistently stealing your joy. 
stealing your assurance of salvation. You don't have it again. That is a manifestation of a wanted tree in your life. Just like Joshua said, so what shall I say? When Israel turned their back before the enemy, you are considered turning your back before the enemy in the field. That is a manifestation of an unwanted tree in your life. Another thing is spiritual bondage and oppression. When you can notice definite spiritual oppression in your health, in your own, in, maybe in your dreams, maybe in your thoughts, it's a definite spiritual oppression. You could feel the weight. You could feel it hanging all over you, hanging around you. Maybe because you are holding an item of the enemy. That is a manifestation of an unwanted tree in your life. You have to shake it with that spiritual oppression. When you're even afraid to go to bed, but you don't know it, what will the devil do tonight? How will he manifest himself tonight? You have to get rid of that unwanted tree. That is a manifestation of an unwanted tree in your life. Do not get used to it. Do not think, no, it's just the way it is. You know, it's the people back home that are sending all this uh, attack against me. Don't get used to it. Don't accept it. You have to deal with it today. You have to understand, identify it as an unwanted tree even in your life. Let's look at 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I'll be reading to you in verse 26. 2 Timothy 2 and in verse 26. Talk about him. And that they may over recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. The devil takes you captive at his will. Whenever he wants, he comes. Under that spiritual bondage and oppression, whenever he comes, whenever he wants, he sends those thoughts, those thoughts, those lustful thoughts, those thoughts of immorality, and then you embrace it. You are taken captive at his will. That is a manifestation of an unwanted tree. Whenever he wants, he wants. He sends those thoughts of bitterness, of strife, of jealousy in your heart. Those are manifestations of unwanted trees in your life. Whenever you want, the devil takes you captive at his will. You know, it makes you to react in a way you shouldn't. It makes you to say things you shouldn't. Those are unwanted trees in your life. Another manifestation of these trees is unanswered prayer. You that you 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 love the sweet hour of prayer. You have assurance in your heart when you pray that God will do, even when you have not seen it manifested, you believe that God is doing is going to do it, and you see a result. But nowadays, how is it now? Unanswered prayer. It looks as if God is so distant. You have no assurance of his power. You have no assurance of his willingness to answer you. It's like there's a blockage between you and God. It's like you're just praying perfunctionarily, Just because you have to pray. You don't have answers to prayers again. You don't even have assurance that God is going to answer. Because many things have happened. Because you've opened the door for the enemy. These are manifestations of unwanted traits in your life. And you have to fight tonight. You have to fight. You have to deal with them even tonight. Quickly look at Isaiah 59. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah in chapter 59. And we are looking at verses 1 and 2. Behold, the lost hand is not surely that they cannot see. There is ear heavy that it cannot hear, verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. That is your experience nowadays. Like there's a blockage, there's a separation between you and God. Lastly, in this second subtopic, manifestation of unwanted trees, is inability for you to achieve goals or to attain heights. When you are constantly falling short of your expected goals, God, I want to be prayerful. This month, I'm praying. And then you are not praying. God, I want to evangelize. I, you know that person that you've told me to speak to, I'm going to speak to. But, but then you don't do it. You're always falling short of the goal. of Even in your career, there is something blocking it. For you to progress. Others are progressing around you. They are not more hardworking than you, but somehow you cannot just progress. 
like everybody does, you know, just hates you. So there is that 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 cloud of disfavor around you. These are unwanted things that you need to do. Don't just take in the okay, that's the way I am, that's the way it is. No. Identify it as an unwanted tree and fight against it and deal with it. When things seem to always be almost for you, oh, I almost got it. Oh, I almost achieved it. Oh, I almost uh, did that. Oh, I, and it's almost and almost and I have never sat back and wondered why is this thing like this in my life? You know, why is this thing like this in my life? Like I could be a little thing. I remember when I was younger and when I was growing up. Many a time when there's a significant thing for me to do, I will just fall sick. As if we are going to have a celebration and expecting it, I will just fall sick. Even when I was writing my final exams in secondary school, I fell sick. It was an unwanted tree. So actually, you know, and it's something I had to battle against. Those that the devil comes in sub two ways, and at times we don't even identify it. At the time you look at your kids, at the time you look at your children, your family, and you feel, this thing, why is it happening like this in my children? It could be an unwanted thing, something you have to attack, something you have to fight against, something that you have to deal with. Lastly, before we pray, let's look at destroying unwanted trees in our life. Destroying unwanted trees in our life. Unwanted trees need to be destroyed. They, you know, not trim. You're not supposed to trim them. Okay, let me just trim them like, you know, they... Do all these flowers, you know, all the tree that are flowers, and then they trim it. it looks so nice. Don't trim it. Not that you will cut some leaves. Oh, this unwanted tree of anger. And let me just cut some tree, uh, some leaves. Let me make it a bit, you know, less. No, not that you remove a branch. Okay, let me be more drastic. Drastic and remove a branch. No, it should be uprooted. Every tree, every plant, and my heavenly father has no plant shall be uprooted. That's what Jesus said. This or water trees should be totally removed. Totally removed. And give them no means of growing back again. Not the time to be diplomatic and say, okay, be diplomatic. Let me just, you know, it's a time for you to remove it. And I, as we go along, I will tell you, we'll look at some ways. We can remove it. I remember in our university days, there was a sister that just gave her life to Christ. But she had unwanted trees. Before she gave her life to Christ, she, you know, she was, you know, in, in, into some relationships, promiscuity. And then when she gave her life to Christ, that unwanted tree was still there. And then she said, ah, I wanted to, I want to visit somebody. I want to visit this. Well, oh, you can't visit that person. You are a Christian. I said, but I promised him before I became born again that I was going to come. It doesn't matter. You have to put that on water tree. Don't say, no, I have to be diplomatic. Okay, I will just go. I will not enter his room. And they, just uproot it totally. Don't even think about it. There's some relationship you are having now that you need to just stop immediately. Not saying, okay, I will sort of cut back on it. I will not uh, be, you know, do, do as much as you. You have to totally approve these things in your life. And you see in the outline, don't get comfortable with your water tree. Don't get comfortable with it. Oh, I don't, I was, I don't used to be angry like this before. But now, maybe it's the weather of this UK that's making me now like this, you know? I don't used to be, to be, to, to be vain like this before. Maybe it's the way this environment, that's why I'm now vain. Don't get comfortable with the unwanted tree. Oh, I don't used to have this oppression before, but now, you know, and then you get comfortable with it. Don't get comfortable with the unwanted tree. You must deal with them. You must uproot them. You must, you must totally destroy them in your life. Oh, I used to be more prayerful before, but now I'm not in that prayerful world. I think it's because I have more things to do. Don't get comfortable with your water tree. God used to speak to me before. I had to hear from God before. But now at least I'm not hearing from God. All I hear is the TV or the social media or somebody calling me for a shift. That's all I hear nowadays. And then you are getting comfortable with that spiritual state that you are. Don't get comfortable with your water tree in your life. Oh, this thing has been in my life, you know, for some years even before I came to the UK, and now I'm just used to it. Don't get comfortable with any unwanted tree in your life. 
let's look at some of the steps we can take to destroy water trees in our life. The first one, of course, is giving our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you're here, you've never given your life to Christ. I tell you, there are many unwanted trees in your life. Many. The most crucial one is that unwanted tree of the bondage to sin. Or you're here, you're backsliding. First thing to do, to, first tree to remove is that tree of sin. Give your life to Christ. The Bible says in John 1, 12, as many as receive him, he give them power to become the sons of God. That power uproot that tree from your life. You have to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the initial step. That is the crucial thing. Give your life to the Lord. If you backslide it, get restored to the Lord. So that that unwanted tree can be removed from your life. Another thing, of course, is for you to aspire for revival and spiritual awakening. To destroy a water tree in your life. Aspire for revival and spiritual awakening. Try to God to awaken you spiritually, to make you alive in Him again. You've lost focus, you've lost spiritual focus. Cry for God for revival. And because you lost focus, the devil has planted so many trees in your life, so many plants in your life. Ask God to open your, 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 your eyes. Look at sister, um, Isaiah 64. Isaiah chapter 64. And we are looking at verse 1. Isaiah 64. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. That should be your prayer tonight. Rend the heaven, O God. Keep down upon me, O God. Revive me. Let the mountain flow at your presence. And when the mountains start to flow, because of the power of God that is flowing with, those unwanted trees will be uprooted. We, you know, we, we go with, you know, with that flow of God's power. It's like a flood. That flood will wipe away, will uproot, will remove those unwanted trees in your life. Ask God to revive you. Ask God to awaken you. Ask God to make his river to flow and take away those unwanted trees. Another thing we can use to destroy unwanted trees in our life is to oppose the enemies through spiritual authority and warfare. You know, some of these unwanted trees, you may attempt me to, 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 to waste spiritual warfare. You may attempt me to take authority and command in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for those unwanted trees to be removed in your life. Just like I'm just like Moses said, he said, Arise, O God, and let your enemies be scattered. We need to take such authority and say, All these unwanted trees in my life, God, arise, let them be destroyed, let them be uprooted. You know, some of them that might have gone so deep, taking root so deep into your life. You may have to take spiritual authority. Like Jesus said, this type go out not out by prayer and fasting. There's some unwanted thing that you may really need to take authority over. Um, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. And we'll look at verses 4 and 5. Second Corinthians chapter 10. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, verse 5. Casting down imaginations, those imaginations against God, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That is taking spiritual authority. That is warfare. You cast them down. Every thought, you cast them down. You bring it to captivity and say, This thing that has been affecting my life all this while, I take spiritual authority over you. You pray a prayer of warfare, a prayer of authority, and you destroy those unwanted trees in your life. Another thing you have to do is to relinquish or destroy all items of the enemy. Spoken a bit about that before. Anything you have obtained that belongs to the enemy, relinquish it. Don't try to rationalize it. Okay, I will not hold it every day. I will not touch it every day. I will not look at it every day. And then I will, I, I will keep it where I cannot easily assess it. You know, most okay, I will give some back. Maybe they gave me the amulet and the chain. I will give the amulet back. I will, I will, I will be with the chain. Don't hold any part of it back. Or it could be an unholy covenant, an agreement you have made before. It could be a blood covenant you made before. You 
have to annul it. Any blood covenant you've entered, any unholy alliance you've entered, any cult you've joined, you have to annul it and say, God, I give my life to you now and I annul all this covenant, all this agreement I have made before to destroy them. Like we read in Acts of Apostles, they brought back, those that used figures that they brought and they burnt it, you have to burn it. Destroy all the items of the enemy in your possession. Those ungodly books, those immoral books, burn them. Throw them away. Destroy them. Those unholy sites that you visit on the internet, destroy it. That is what you should do. Don't rationalize. You have to destroy all the items of the enemy. It could be a waistband that you tie. Nobody can see it. Your pastor cannot see it, but it's there. You are giving, you know, back home. Say it's, it's, it's just, it's, it doesn't really matter. It's just a cloth. It's just to protect you. You have to destroy those items of the enemy. If you want the unwanted trace to be removed from your life. Lastly, you seeking the elders or joining your faith with other believers. This is very important. I want you to understand that it is scriptural for you to go to your pastors, to your leaders, even to believers, and join your faith with theirs for the uprooting of some trees. Scriptural it doesn't mean you are you you I mean you are a baby in Christ. It doesn't mean you don't know what you are doing. James chapter five, James five, verse fourteen. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and then pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Fifteen. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Sixteen. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Pray one for another. So it's scriptural. Let him go to the elders and then pray over him. You know, we live in a society of individualism. Should it be like that in the church? You're struggling with something. Your faith is not able to carry you through. Bible says, Go to the elders of the church. Go to your pastor. Don't, don't feel ashamed. Don't feel, no, this is a private thing. Go to the elder of the church and then pray over him, anointing him with, with oil in the name of the Lord. It's scriptural. Let's learn or let's revive that habit of praying one for another. Let's invite, I mean, I mean, let, I mean let us revive that habit of they that fear the Lord, speak often one to another. Speaking to ourselves, I tell my brother, my brother, I'm having this challenge. Can we pray together about it? Can you join me in prayers? You know, some of us, even our partner, our wives, our husband, we don't even tell them what we are struggling with. We don't tell them about, you know, plan that the Heavenly Father has not planted. You are seeing the effect in your life. You are struggling with it. You don't even tell your partner, your wife, your husband, and then join them together to pray. Let them pray together in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sin, it shall be forgiven him. I want you to retrospect. Look into your life now. What are those unwanted traits that may be in your life? Like I said, you will not be something big. What are those things that were not there before? That when you look at the fruit, by their fruit, you shall know them. When you look at the fruit, it is producing in your life. You know, oh, this is not God's plan for me. This is not God's will for me. Oh, this sickness, you know, something is wrong. This is not what God asked for me. God is telling you, I can heal you of this sickness. This sickness is not for me. It could even be your mental health. That you feel, oh, what's happening to my mental health? And God is telling you, this is an unwanted thing. Deal with it. Pray about it. You know, you, you know, take authority. Take possession. Take back your possession. And then you are just there getting comfortable with, it, with that unwanted thing. Tonight we are going to pray. And as you allow God to search you, as you allow God any cause of unwanted thing in your life, as you confess to God and you allow God to cleanse you, as you look into your life and you see what those unwanted things are doing in your life, they're not making you to attain what you should attain. As you go to God in prayer now with spiritual authority, holding on to the promises of God, God can destroy and uproot any unwanted tree in your life. Before we pray, uh, Matthew chapter 18, 
Matthew chapter 18 in verse 13. So the Matthew chapter 15, verse 13. Matthew 15, verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant, every tree, which my heavenly Father has not planted, shall be rooted up. As you love God to search tonight, that will be your experience tonight in Jesus' name. Let's go to the Lord in prayers. I want you to talk to the Lord. Of putting the trees not planted by God. What are those trees in your life? I'm talk about the causes of a water tree in your life. Are you still holding on to any item of the enemy? My brother, relinquish it. My sister, do away with it. Have you breached the word of protection? Have you broken the hedge and the serpent has beaten? Turn to God today and tell him to have mercy upon you. You cannot now. You cannot now, even though you stay in the door of the house of the Lord, but your back is to the house of the Lord and your face is turned toward the east. Tell God to have mercy on you. Tell God to have mercy on you. Come to God. Let a man search his same self. So let him eat of that bread. Search yourself tonight. Allow the Spirit of God to search you. And where have you gone wrong? Where have you allowed the devil in your heart? Maybe the things you are reading now. Maybe the things you're watching now. Maybe you are watching occultic things now on the internet. And that has opened the door for the enemy to plant on water tree in your life. Confess it before God now. Come to God and confess it. Are you seeing the manifestation of water trees in your life? Talk to the Lord. Are you seeing that manifestation in your life? Spiritual bondage and oppression. Unanswered prayers. No freshness, no joy of salvation. Instead of the fruit of the Spirit in your life, is the works of the flesh you are seeing now. Ask God to have mercy upon you. So, to remove, identify them, and start asking God to destroy those unwanted trees. As you have confessed your faults, as you have reconciled yourself to God, as you have asked Him to revive you, tell Him, God, rend the heavens, O God. Come down, let the mountain flow at your presence, or put in your water trees. Relinquish, relinquish, destroy all the items of the enemy in your hand, in your house, in your life. That God can start working in your life, so that the water trees in your life can be rooted off. 